Hello, welcome to another Rightly Witterings. Cheers. Mmm, good tea. Now, I've got lots of inks and I don't have many places to store them, which is a problem occasionally, such as when my little puppy dog found a bottle of ink, just like this, and decided it looked fascinating. So she took it away with her to hide underneath my dining table where she normally goes. And the first I knew of this was when I saw her sitting up beside the table with a very thoughtful expression on her face. Apparently, Diamine Sunset Yellow doesn't taste all that nice. There was ink everywhere. I ma she'd punctured one hole in the bottle, thank goodness, and hadn't drunk too much. I would have had her straight down to the vet. But um, I managed to decant all of the Sunset Yellow into another Diamine bottle that I had because fortunately I had a small bottle of Diamine Prussian Blue, but I've also got a big bottle, which is absolutely full now, as you can see, because it now has the contents of that bottle, as well as what was left over, and I rinsed it out and filled it with Sunset Yellow, which works nicely. Thank goodness. But I have got lots of inks. And it occurred to me it'd be rather nice to actually do some reviews of the different inks that I've got. But although I have a number of extremely good nibs and a lot of dipping pens, I discovered that none of them seemed to work very well with the paper I had. I think it was probably my error rather than the nibs or the inks error but um, I got a lot of feathering, a lot of bleeding. I think it was just putting down too much ink on the paper that I had. So I thought it would be interesting to use some better quality paper. So I've got Atoma paper here. Anyone who's seen my comments on Atoma will know that I love these little notepads because they're so easy. You write notes and then you rip out the pages and put them back in wherever you want. Such a lovely, simple design, but really, really effective. So I thought if I did some review, some um, note taking with the inks, I would need a pen that had a good broad nib, but also that would be easy to fill, to flush clean with water so that I can refill it with a new ink. I didn't have a pen that would do that, so I had to start go away and start thinking quite carefully. And those nice gentlemen at Cult Pens advised me that the best thing I could do would be to buy another pen from them. Wasn't that a surprise? So here is my look at a new pen and the first writing in Sunset Yellow in that pen. I hope you enjoy it. So here we have it. This is the ink that my little dog tried to eat. Not something I think she'll be trying to do again in the near future because I don't think the flavour really appealed to her. <clears throat> As I said, she did look remarkably earnest. Now, I have not just got this one ink. I've got lots of inks. I have some very nice Dutch masters. I've got Edelstein. I've got <coughs> actually about a hundred different diamine inks. Yuyaki. I've got Tsuyu. I've got several different Hiroshizukus. I've got Watermans. I've got all types. I have inks everywhere and something that's really appealed to me for quite some time is filming what the inks look like and doing reviews of different inks and I thought this would be a nice one to start with since it's already been exposed to the air I've had to decant it into this new bottle and so yes it made sense I thought let's see if we can make an interesting presentation. Now some years ago, in fact two years ago I think, I went out and purchased a nice Twisby pen. This is only one of their basic pens, it's a Twisby Eco. I don't know why it's called an Eco, it's not ecologically sound, it's plastic. But who cares, it is a very good pen that works extremely well. And I do like the fact that you can see the colour of the ink through the barrel. So I thought that would be a good pen to demonstrate with, but the trouble is Although this will fit into the bottle quite nicely, 
it has the difficulty that you've got to slowly twiddle this to drive the piston down and then suck up the ink by pulling the piston up. It takes time. And then in between each test of ink, I'd have to rinse it out and flush it, twist it down, twist it up again, and that would take a lot of time. And I started thinking there must be a better pen that I could use. I've got lots of delightful Conway Stewart pens with broad nibs. I've got some lovely Cavecos with broad nibs. Still have the same problem. It takes time to flush them through and clean them. So I thought there must be something better I could use. And I spoke to that nice chap at Cult Pens who often costs me money. And as a result, this morning, this arrived. This is you're privileged, you're seeing the actual original unboxing of this. This is another Twisby. I don't know if you can see that in the uh, logo there. It's got a nice little logo, Twisby. And it's called the Twisby Go. Go where? Go do what? It doesn't say. It's just a go. So let's try to... Oh, it's sealed both ends. Right, I have a cure for seals. It's known as a pen knife. So it's just cut through these carefully without cutting myself or damaging the pen inside. That's one. That's two. Put the pen away for safety. Now if I lift the lid, here is a nice little Twisby Go. This is the first time I've handled it. You're seeing the original unboxing. I haven't actually got this out yet. I like the packaging. Fairly robust plastic packaging, I guess. But Twisby are noted for the plastics that they use. And this is it. It is, I would say, one of the ugliest pens I have ever seen. And I don't think many people would disagree with that. Um, very light. Very plasticky. It's got a little hole here so that you can put a lanyard through it or you can just keep it in your pocket. I believe the cap just comes off. Yes, it does. It just clips on and off. And inside here we have this nice Twisby nib. But the great thing about this pen is not its looks or anything silly like that. The great thing about this pen is the loading mechanism is really remarkable. All you do, stick that into the ink you want, press down, the plunger goes down, let it go, the plunger comes back up and sucks ink straight in. Just to show that again, you press down, and then as it comes up it sucks in inks into this really fair sized reservoir. Now a lot of people will be saying, ugh, that's really ugly. Yeah, I don't disagree. It's not a beautiful pen like one of my Viscontis or even, to be fair, my Eco, which I think is rather an elegant pen. This is a very different type of plastic. It feels a lot cheaper. Um, but the pen is a lot cheaper. It's 20 quid. Now, that might sound like a fair amount of money uh, if you're used to buying Bic Biros, but in the fountain pen world, that is really very good value. And the thing I am going to enjoy is this nib, I hope because it is a 1.1 millimeter stub if the right thing arrived i haven't actually checked <laughs> but um with that i should be able to demonstrate inks really nicely because it should show all of the shading and the graduation that you can get with an ink so what i'm going to do now is pause things go away flush this pen through with a few washes of water just to make sure there's no oils or anything left on the nib and then I'll be straight back to load this with some ink and see what it looks like on paper. See you in a moment or two. Okay, so the Wanderer has returned. Now, before anything else, let me just show you what comes in the way of instructions with this. One thing I do like about Twisby is that they take their instruction manuals quite seriously. So on the Eco, when you open it up, you have a fairly extensive list of instructions about how to fill the pen, what happens with 
uh, the pen when you turn the knob at the back so you drive it downwards put it into ink then drive it upwards and that sucks the ink into it really simple to understand it also comes with a little pot of silicon that you can use to um, oil the inside of the piston and a take apart tool which is ever so interesting I've not bothered to do that yet I do have a friend who bought one of these pens on my recommendation and he read the instructions on the first day so before he used the pen he took it apart completely and then didn't have the faintest idea how to put it back together again which was rather sad but also hilarious um, I was not going to let him forget that obviously and here you have a series of instructions for the Twisby Eco it's got how you refill or change the nib feeder or anything else now one thing I would say is any type of pen you get and this is something I saw on a YouTube video not that long ago do not ever wash the nib in hot water there's a good reason for saying that this the nib you'll see here underneath it is this dark plastic section now on almost every pen you touch that's going to be made out of a type of plastic which will be damaged severely if you put it in hot water and once it's damaged it's got to be replaced so don't ever rinse these in hot water always always use cold now back to the instructions here we have a simple set of instructions about what you do with this pen well, what do you know? It's exactly as I just explained it. So all you do is you take off the sheath from the back of the pen so that you expose the spring, shove it into your pot of ink, press down, let it go, and you should have a nice full section full of a delightfully coloured ink. So let's see if that actually works. Here we have my sunset, carefully decanted into a fresh bottle because the original one sprang a leak thank you dog now here's a word to the wise when you've got a bottle like this if you put the pen straight in and jam it right up to there when you push down you're going to be pushing all that air into that little space and what will happen is you'll have a sudden violent ink explosion which will be thoroughly embarrassing so it's a good idea, good practice, to press the plunger down before you put it into the bottle, then put it into the bottle, and when you release, you'll suck up all that gorgeous ink. There you go. Wasn't that nice and easy? This may not look like a vast quantity of ink, but believe me, that's actually a very good amount. And now all we need is a bit of paper. Fortunately, I brought some before I started. So let's just see how this goes. That is a very nice, very nice indeed nib. The great thing about these nibs is that even though they're only steel, stainless steel, a well-made nib in stainless steel can feel as good as the best gold one if it's tuned properly. And this really does feel very nice. So it's a Twiz B. And it's just called a Go. Very good name. It's strange, but this is... The sort of pen I can actually see myself using a lot more than I would have anticipated. It feels delightful. The ink flow is very, very good. See, the thing is that whenever I start doing this, I always realise that I hadn't thought about what I was going to write. So I've just been cheating and reading off my bookmark there. How do you go about that, eh? Nice and straightforward. King of Thieves. Using... Right. 
I do think that is a very lovely colour. It looks a lot better than apparently it tastes. Which is a problem, I've just realised, because at some point when I just reached to get the bookmark to show you, I managed to get ink in my cup of tea. I think that cup of tea may be disposed of and not used. So there you are. My first trial of a new Twisby Go with a 1.1 stub nib. Very, very happy with the pen. The nib feels superb. It shows that with this ink in particular, there's very little shading, which I'm surprised at. I thought it would give more, but I'm not worried. It, it shows the quality of the ink, which is really what I wanted this pen for. So it is not the most beautiful fountain pen in the world. It is not the most prestigious looking. It is not the most expensive looking, and there's a good reason for all of those. It isn't the most expensive, it isn't the most prestigious, but it does do the one thing I wanted really, really well, and that is it loads ink, it discards the ink, it's fast to empty, it's fast to flush, and it's fast to refill. I can't ask for anything more than that. And the sad fact is, I actually like using this so much, I think this is going to be a keeper that'll be in my pocket for a long time after I've finished reviewing different inks. There you go, I can re recommend that. Hope you liked all that. Um, if you did, don't forget to hit the like button, please. It really does help to demonstrate the people who are watching and they're enjoying it. Um, if, you did, if you enjoyed this and you haven't done it already, please subscribe and then you'll get an update whenever I put a new review down. And if you've got any ideas for other things that you'd like to see reviewed or commented on, make a comment down at the bottom and I'll be happy to do that as well. As things stand right now, I'm going to be reviewing books, I'm going to be reviewing inks. When I get pens, I'll make some comments about them. I've got to make a comment about my Conway Stewart, actually. I want to compare all of them with other pens. And apart from that, any ideas that come through from you, I'll be very grateful for. So, thanks a lot for watching. Hope it was interesting, hope it was worthwhile, and look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers! Now I've got to go and change this cup of tea with this delightful sunset yellow ink. <laughs> Take care. Bye.